The American League wild card is in the books as the A's lose a snoozer to the Rays, and we got two DS games coming up to preview. Let's do it. All right, what's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us and listening to another episode of Talking Baseball. The players, the playoffs are underway. The two wild card games have come and went. We got two DS games to preview. We got this uh, American League wild card game to recap. We'll get into all of that. First, got to introduce myself. My name is John Boy. Coming to you from New Jersey. Real name's Jimmy, if, you, if you're unaware. You can call me that. And I got my co-host, good best friend Jake here. Coming to you from Denver. A little late night recording session because we got some stuff to do in the morning. And most importantly, this episode of Talking Baseball is brought to you by some fine people. Meet Cynical. Paul Jarman. Oh, I'm feeling a soft J there. Yarman. Polly Yar. Otherwise, his name is Jarman. Collects jars. That'd be the awesome. Jarman. Yeah. Daniel. Solid yep. name. Might go by Danny. Might go by Dan. We don't know. Alex Goodwin. I've got a theory on all the single name people. Okay. They don't want people to know their full name. Is that a theory? Uh, that's a theory. It's a bad theory. Uh, okay. All the guys that. Uh, all the guys and gals that don't give their last name, they're Major League Baseball players. I'm confident of it. That's probably Daniel Hudson. Oh, okay. That's great yeah. news. He was excited that he he was all excited to win yesterday, wanted to hear what we had to say, found out yeah. that we are a Patreon, needs to hear it live. Okay, thank you, Daniel Hudson. Alex Goodwin, Cassidy Martin, and Trevor Gildea. Gilda, Gildau, Gildea. Those are our most recent Patreon sponsors. Uh, they have access to watch live, to win a couple jerseys each month, and they really help us out as we continue to grow in uh, the early stages of this podcast and everything. So we appreciate that. Jake, how are you doing? I'm doing well, James. Had a late night cup of coffee to bring the heat for this. Uh, more heat than... The, the baseball game itself brought, unfortunately. Uh, Oakland just couldn't get anything going. I'm, I'm doing well, man. I, uh, I, I'm wondering right now if there's going to be almost a mini lull after the wild cards because we just got two game sevens. Well, that's uh, my spin zone. If this was a really exciting game like yesterday's, like the NL wild card, then we then I'd be in fear of this lull. Like, man, these game ones of the DSs are gonna seem kind of benign or whatever in comparison. But this game being such a dud, entertainment wise for neutral fans. If you're a Rays fan, you should be very happy, very excited. If you're an A's fan, you should be devastated and kind of like upset, I think. But for as a neutral fan, that was a dud of a game. That was that was pretty boring. And you and I are baseball enthusiasts, and we can usually enjoy kind of, you know, games that everyone else say, oh, that game sucked. Like, oh, there's good stuff to it. There's some good stuff in the beginning. But once it got past that first hour, it just dragged. We can get into it. But uh, but my spin zone is this game being a dud has me excited for the DS games. So I'm like, I need more. Okay. That wasn't my good I fix. You know how, like, you want to end a uh, basketball practice on a good shot, or you want to end right. uh, your cage session with a good, good swing barrel ball up. This was like a foul tip, and it's like I need another, I need another game. Yeah, and and to be fair, a, a good chunk of it was uh, the the Rays pitchers made this game pretty boring. Yeah. So sh shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, not a. Not not one that you flash in front of the, the non-baseball fan at the bar and be like, are you watching this? Do you have a burn of it? I do have a burn of it. You want to do that before we get into it? Yeah, let's get, let's get through it. All right. This burn of the American League wild card game is brought to you by either our ad company put an ad right there or they didn't. 
All right, here we go. That's fun. On your mark, get set, burn. The Coastal Kissing Cousins for their frugal ways meet up in the do or die game as Oakland and Sean Manaya hosted the salty Charlie Morton and his Rays. First batter of the game, Yandy Diaz to the parking lot where most A's fans were when it happened. One nothing Rays, a huge gut punch. Top two, I'm ever sailing away. Two run shot for Garcia, three nothing the road team in a wild card game. Tell me if you've seen that one before. But top three, you haven't seen this. The Yandy man can. So nice he does it twice. Second shot for the big man whose last hit was in late July. He was injured. Wowie, wow, wow, wowie, wow, wow. wow. Four-nothing Rays, but a ray of hope for Oakland as they push one across on a Ramon Laureano sack fly after an error. It's 4-1. Okay, A's get some momentum. Nah, good game, fam. Tommy fam to deep center. It's 5-1 Rays. The Tampa pitching is the story. Dominant as they go Morton to Castillo to Anderson, and they finally end it with their pagan ways to win it. 5-1 to one final. They'll head to Houston to play the Strohs. Nice. High and tight. That's all this game gave me. Rays, all the Rays decisions worked out, Jake. Like Yandy yeah. Diaz gets to start two home runs. Garcia gets to start. I was shocked they left Morton in for as long as they did. That worked out because there was a point. It was the first inning where I was like, oh, shit, Morton doesn't have his curveball. Base is loaded. Uh, he's going to get in trouble here. And then got out of that. Then it was on base fest for a while. Like every half inning, there was someone on base, it felt like. Uh, Morton, uh, Morton gets out of it. The play works. They go to the bullpen. That one dude is fucking nasty. Anderson or whatever his name is. So the the Rays are a bit unconventional in their ways. They went, they, the, they kept a starter in, which is conventional, but unconventional for the unconventional race. Double negative brings you back to normal. But uh, I li- like that. Good on the Rays. Yeah. G- good on the Rays. Good on Charlie Morton. Um, doesn't give up an earned run over five innings. Um, and like didn't have his A plus stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's that's impressive by him. Kind of a kind of a gutty performance on the road. And yeah, I mean Yandy Diaz. It, it there's something to we we've we've overanalyzed the decisions that go into some of these games, and we uh, you were all over it, and we see the Rays a good amount because uh, they play the Yankees 19 times a year. But Rays don't care about your name. The Rays are kind of what we talked about with the Brewers last night. Like, okay, there's a lefty in, uh, then we're going to throw in a bunch of righties. G-Man Choi, our lefty first baseman that's been killing it, uh, that was on the postseason picture representing the Rays, he, he's on the bench because they're opening up with the lefty. They put Yandy Diaz in the leadoff hole. And I know when we saw him when we he was healthy earlier this year, it was like, whoa. That dude's a bad man. He's got a little bit of that Eric Thames effect where he's fucking yoked up. He he looks like he could be playing linebacker or shooting guard or something like that. Um, and his shot fired across the bow. We got God. It's actually Thames. Thames? Yeah. <laughs> it's the running saga. I think we're just being punked right now. I think we're getting punked by everyone. I don't know, if I don't know which way it is. I should have watched the video. But, yeah, man, good for Yandy Diaz. Uh that was a boring game. The A's, I went into the live chat. Uh, I went into Joe's McFly's live live yeah. know, streaming during the game. I went in there for a little bit, and he was like, A's got glass jaws, man. The Yankees punched him in the face in the first couple innings last year, and they died. This punch in the face here, they died. Uh, they, they did, like, they get a base runner every now and then, but it was always with two outs. They hit into a double play at one point. It was bad. Yeah, I was I was going through things things you run through for the A's. I mean, obviously the conversation on sports radio for the A's off season will be uh we should have started fires. And it was funny before the game some some people were were going at the the Manaya hasn't given up a run in the first four innings and they were like, "Well, that's, you know, that's due for regression." And it's like, "Yeah. 
Because any yeah, pitcher that doesn't give up runs is going to be too for regression because that's not how the sport works. Find me um, a pitcher th- who's got a scoreless streak and isn't due for a regression. Yeah, exactly. So um, it is crazy, and the stat you'll hear if you're an Oakland fan for the rest of the year is that Manaya gives up as many earned runs in this start as he did in his five starts he had this season. Uh, he clearly didn't have it, and the, the Rays were geared up. And, Jim, I think what's going to be the recurring theme that we've seen in these two games already, it was the high fastballs. If you can handle a high fastball and drive it where it needs to go, I mean, we saw some big boy home runs from the Rays. We saw two to center, and Yandy went apo taco twice. Uh, so I, I think that's looking like the early theme in the playoffs. If you can handle uh, – that high fastball, you're you're gonna thrive in these playoffs because that's what everybody throws. The Manea pitches weren't that bad, I didn't think. They were just able to kind of sit on them. Like I don't know. They were high and outside. They just like did what they had to do with them. Yandi did what he had to do with it. The one he had an O two, he got it to two two and he wanted to do that high outside corner for a strike. He put it right where he wanted it. Guy handled it. So I don't know. Yeah, I will. I will say this though: two years in a row, where the A's opened the playoffs with a pitcher with zero playoff experience. Yeah, and I think if they make the wild card or whatever next year, they should probably pivot from that. We're gonna see a lot in the second half of the show. Teams going with experienced guys over the rookies. Yeah, and I'm 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 going to walk over you a little bit because the part that sucks is that towards the end of this game, I mean the three innings by Lazardo, if you're a baseball fan, that that was close to baseball porn. I mean, that kid looks special. Yeah. Um, you know, it's one of those <laughs> it almost turns into a hindsight thing. It's like, why didn't you throw this dude? He's dirty, huh? Well, uh, I'm not saying obviously... it was a bad decision cuz I was fine with the Manaya de- right. decision. But in the future, I think, I think you might do someone who who maybe doesn't have to deal with nerves as well as everything else. And I I think the stat you mentioned the the A's having a glass jaw. I I think they're and again this this goes back over a period of time now. But they're zero and nine in their last do or die games. Yeah, um, it's since nineteen seventy three. That's uh, that's hey, pretty good. Pretty goes pretty far yeah, back. Yeah, I mean that '73 team. I don't. There's. I think there's only a couple players that are still on the roster, yeah. but it's They've changed uh, hands uh, a little bit. It's one of those things you just don't want to be a story because once it's a story, that sucks. Um, and yet the only thing that I looked back at and was like, uh, this could have been a pivot point for Oakland, was when Profar missed getting hit by the pitch. Uh, that was like the most momentum the A's had going, and that pitch was all over his left thigh, and he just got it out of the way in time, uh, and that was kind of their best chance at a rally. So it sucks uh, because you never – even even in Little League, you feel bad saying like, hey, take that one for the team, kid. Uh, never mind the major league level for a guy who used to be the number one prospect in baseball. Uh, but that was literally their best opportunity – and again, we we keep saying boring game, and and if you're one of the hundred Rays fans out there, you feel a little offended because your guys shoved. I mean, the pitchers were insane, and uh, the Rays are going to be a scary. The Rays with a lead are one of the scariest teams left in the playoffs. Well, I'll say this: Rays fans, all you felt this game was excitement and happiness, so that means it is boring. Yeah, a little bit. I, I think there's an argument there to say happiness is, is a, not good, for them. a good thing. Not for them. Like, right. Like, for a third party. Like, they can't be upset if a third party person says that was a boring game. No, 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 no. Um, Just no but, team uh, had a swing of emotions. There was never an emotional swing. It's Ray's yeah. happy, A's sad, stayed that way for nine innings. Throughout the duration. Um, From the first batter on. Yeah, Yandy, man. Good for him. Yeah, well, the, we're, we'll do this on a future episode, obviously. But they just announced that Glass Glass now is gonna be the starter for the game one versus Houston. 
we saw that kid as Yankee fans. We saw him go against the Yankees, and he was like wildly geared up. Yeah, to face the Yankees and like a big start, like couldn't control his emotions in a regular season start against the Yankees. It was a fun big game. They're both good teams, so hopefully he can get a hold of himself a little more. Yeah, hopefully he he learned somewhat of a lesson there. I mean, he's he's going to be was like stuff remember it was like pass ball, wild pitch. Was there a balk? It was it was like dude, I, rein I, yourself in. And there was like a tapper to third. That, that someone beat up and that like started all of it and you saw he clearly got like too emotional um yeah i mean that's when that game one comes up we'll be recording that tomorrow and it'll be out on friday uh but yeah i mean that'll be a huge what to watch for in that game because his uh he's a young dude emotions houston will be rocking uh but when he's right i mean that that could be so much fun friday in houston chris davis looked awful in this game yeah, it sucks, man. I, I found myself rooting for him super hard because uh, he felt he felt like the guy that would spark it for them. Like he's he, he's been there. He's the known power hitter. He had the rough season. He's the guy that if he got one, it felt like, OK, postseason's back on. Chris Davis is here. Let's go. He had nothing. I, you, you wonder if it. Because we saw him a couple times this season, and it was like, is he going to get going? Is he going to get going? And it just never happened. You you almost wonder, is there some injury stuff there? Is it just how baseball flows sometimes, and he could never get his hot streak on? Um, but yeah, tough year for Chris Davis, who's a guy they, they need. Yeah. So the, you still like the wild card after completing two? Probably ask. Oh, I love it. Okay, I agree. I 100% agree. I think it's awesome. It's yeah, I, I just when think you lose if, it. It's just fucking if, brutal. Yeah, if if you get into, I mean, if you get into three game wild cards, I'm kind of open to it because one game is brutal. But at the same time, that's what it's supposed to be. And I like I think the you two get, game wild card system. Like, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think an American league will ever do that because it's a little different. And if no one knows what I'm talking about, there's some league. Is it Japan or is it Korea? Or? It's, Somewhere yeah, does it's it. one of the overseas and it's if you that. are so the, uh, Oakland was the first seed, so they only have to win one game. The Rays would there would be another game. There'd be one more game, and then that's right. the elimination game. But if the A's won today, they win. I like that because three games kind of pushes the other series way too far back. Yeah, you have two games it, it, each day, right? So yesterday you have two, and then the next day you have two. It's the same schedule; doesn't push it back. If and, they won. If they won. Yeah, if the if the if you yeah. needed both. I think I'd like yeah. that a lot. I don't think it'll ever happen, but that's what I would be a fan of. Yeah, for me that's just too tough because then you're gonna demand what, the the road team to win two games on back to back days. Uh I don't know. And I, I think that takes away from that game seven feeling that we said we liked. And I mean, I, I don't think you can increase teams or anything. Right now you get the top third of the league, you get the five best teams from each league. I uh, I really liked it. It was something I was skeptical of the time because I think I was thinking of how much it sucks as a fan <laughs> if your season comes down to one game of not really getting into the playoffs. Yeah. But as not a fan, I, I think it's really good. I think they nailed it. Yeah. No, I, I'm fine with them keeping this way. If they wanted to expand it, I'd do two games. I wouldn't go to three because then, yeah. then it's a series. You're pushing everything back. Your teams are waiting. That kind of sucks. Yeah. You have a road trip involved there. So you can't I like I I don't think you can do three. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on this one? ESPN broadcast was uh did you watch which one did you watch? Did you watch it with sound? Uh I flipped over to the ESPN two nerd channel when I saw your tweet just because I'm hoping that ESPN looks at it and they're like, Whoa, John Boy tweeted and then five a th- five thousand people switched over to ESPN two, which uh which was funny because they're obviously pushing the analytics, and I think there's some stuff there that's like if you're gonna go full analytics broadcast, you're gonna lose people on part of it. Um, even I'm I'm super into analytics. We do a weekly Yankees analytics episode. Um, you know there there's still some stuff there that's not fully proven. Like, did you see the did you see uh, the stats versus pitchers similar to? Yeah, like finesse pitcher, starting pitcher, stuff like or 
Well, no, they compared it to actual guys. Oh. So they 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 brought in I, I forget who was pitching, but it was like, yeah, this this pitcher similar to Severino, uh somebody else, somebody else, I, I forget who it was. And uh the analytics guys were even like, Yeah, this is something we're testing out. We're we're not sure um what kind of correlation it has. And Eduardo Perez, who I, I appreciate Eduardo. He's a player that's trying to appreciate this stuff as much as he can. Uh, but he was just like, you just can't do that. Like you can't like pitchers are, are different. Um, yeah, I didn't see that, but yeah, that seems like even the guys on the broadcast were like, this isn't real. And the producer was like, no, we're good. People are going to like this. I thought that broadcast, I don't know if it was good. It was miles better than Mendoza, Vestirian and yeah. A-Rod. I mean, that's awful, 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 awful product. Yeah. Awful. I, I basically, when I watch that, I'm. I'm tuned in on the game, and my ear turns on when A Rod says something weird. It's awful. Uh, like both, I think the both le- broadcasts have the problem with smothering the game. Like, yeah, they both just nonstop talked. Last last gem that I got of, out of A Rod before I switched over was when they were they said, uh, "Yeah, when Avisail Garcia was in Detroit, they called him a little Miggy." And A Rod was like, "Those are tough expectations. If you don't hit 400 with a thousand homers a year, you're not Miguel Cabrera." And I was like, "Yeah, A Rod, you wrote that one down, and you were feeling real good, huh, buddy?" I like A Rod. I like I like I like those people separately. That booth has such yeah. weird chemistry. Um. It's cool that they offer both broadcasts. They they still need to offer room. Everyone hates Joe Buck. Joe Buck's the fucking best play-by-play guy. He talks so little in comparison to these other guys. Yeah. If a big play happens, you just listen to the crowd, which is what everyone wants. Right. They just smother in the broadcast. But I liked it for a while because they were actually talking about the situations at hand. Right. Which I like. But All right, let's move forward. We got... Two games to talk about. Let's take a little break, and then we'll get to them. Well, hopefully it goes to a break. Now, cool. we'll, come, now we'll come back from the break. We are back. We have the National League Divisional Series starting, Jake. Two games today, which is exciting. We've got Braves versus Cardinals as the first game, and then Dodgers versus Nationals as the nightcap. Let's start with the first game, Braves versus Cardinals, two division winners. We have Miles Michaelis versus Dallas Keuchel. Should be a good matchup. I was reading about. I was reading on these teams, Jake. They're like matched up very similar. Like the Zips projections and all that have them all squared up. Um, I don't know how much we want to do like an overall series preview because right? we're going to do every game anyway. So let's kind of just talk about this matchup, just opening it up. Uh, Braves are the home team. Nicholas versus Keiko. You got any first thoughts? First thoughts uh, that I'll start off pretty wide and zoom in is five game sets are messed up, man. Um, like I, my original note, and you know how my brain works, so this this might get a laugh out of you, but um, I wrote down instantly. I was like, whoever wins game one wins this series. And then <laughs> I was like, well, that's a that's that feels partially obvious. But then I looked at some of the other matchups and I was like, I don't I don't actually believe that. Um, I think <laughs> I think there's a lot of moving parts. And I don't know. You and I talked about this a little bit. We both like Keiko getting the ball game one. He's got the playoff experience. I mean, for all of Houston's build up years before that damn Verlander guy came to town, Keiko was their go to guy. The spot's not going to be too big for him. And Jimmy, he's been really good this year. Uh, you you know this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, Keiko had one 
serious outlier start this year. He had a 3.2 eight earned runs against the Marlins. Um, don't really know what that was about. If you take away that one start, which I think it's one out of 19, Keiko would have had a 3.22 ERA this year. I mean, it, it's not like they're going experience over skill to a giant degree. Although Soroka and Freed are really good. Like, Keiko has had a very quality season. You kind of know what you're going to get. He's going to give you a chance. So I really like them giving the ball to Keiko. Yeah, and he's got experience in the postseason. Nine games started in the postseason, and his team is 6-3 and three in those games. So, you know, nerves aren't going to get the best of him. He is the home pitcher. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Um, he hasn't faced the Cardinals, Jake, this season. And he was in the American League so he for a while. He hasn't faced the Cardinals since August of 2016. And he went five innings pitched, like a lot of earned runs that game. But who cares about that? It was 2016. So that's kind of interesting that there's not a lot of track record there. Only four guys have at-bats against him on the Cardinals. And only one of them has a lot, and that's Goldie, who's got a good amount of at-bats against Keiko, And it's not good. He's got 20 plate appearances, 18 at-bats, only three hits, one double, 250 on base percentage, 20 plate appearances. Um Yachty, Ozuna, Carpenter have a handful. Nothing really worth talking about. So it's Keiko versus a team that hasn't seen him in a while, which is interesting to me or or something that I like to make note of, see how that plays out, because they're going to be feeling each other out their first time through the order, and it might be the second time through the order that either Keiko settles in or they get to him. But there might be a switch change through the first and second time. I think it's funny going over to Michaelis, who will get the ball on the road game one, which is a tough ask anyways. Um, And I've been flip-flopping on some Jack Flaherty thoughts this whole time because I know the Brewers were coming for them, but God, really would like Jack Flaherty ready for game one. But anyways, um, Michaelis, and it's, it's part of how much baseball has changed, he actually led the NL in losses this year. I, I know nobody actually cares about that, how but he many? was nine, nine. He had fourteen. Damn. Um, yeah. So uh, I mean, his stats are pretty solid. I mean, four one six ERA over one hundred eighty four innings pitched. Uh, the FIP isn't too far off from that four two seven. But um, like, this is a guy <laughs> that even five years ago we'd be looking at him starting game one and being like, why are they throwing this jump out there? Uh, so I I think that's kind of a funny thing, and I I think. One of my recurring themes for this theory, and it's what you just mentioned about Keuchel to a degree, is for the Cardinals, the hitters that jump out to me on the Cardinals are the righties. And so we mentioned Keuchel. um, uh, Freed is going to get a start in this one. I want to see, I I think a big part of this series in general is going to be Braves lefty pitching versus the Cardinals righties. And I mean, uh, Paul Goldschmidt, who's been one of the best first basemen in baseball for a while now. Marcelo Zuna, who he's a threat. He's the definition of the threat. I think he's got the stat going around on the nerd cast today was he's got the Cardinals' four hardest hit balls or something like that. And then Jom, he's your guy. Yadier Molina, I'm going to pull the experience card uh, because he has a pretty solid playoff batting average, and he's got 89 playoff games and 343 playoff appearances. If Yachty's in a with runners on base against a Braves lefty, I mean, I really like I like Yachty's experience there. So I think Braves lefties versus the Cardinals righties are going to be one of the biggest themes of this series, and and probably game one. I was going through the Cardinals lineup, Jake. It is not that good. Nobody uh, jumps off the page. <laughs> nobody jumps off the page besides Goldie. Yeah. Um. And then I went through like, all right, well, has anyone been hot lately? So I pulled up their September numbers. They're fucking brutal, man. Yeah. In September, now Yachty had a 682 OPS in September. But I agree with you. Yachty in the playoffs, I expect him to come to. I expect Yachty to be a threat. 
He's going to give Fa- you an at bat. That's Dexter all you can Fowler ask. Fowler in September, 636 OPS. De Jong, 655 OPS. Ozuna, 622 OPS. Bader, 646 OPS. These guys are all in their starting lineup. They all have fucking brutal Septembers. That's below average. Yeah, and if I, you I, don't know, uh, OPS that starts with six is below average. I, I Gold, think Goldie the one and Edmund have, have been crazy. Yeah, that's the the one name we haven't mentioned yet that Cardinals fans would be mad at is Tommy Edmund. Uh, rookie, he's come up this year, 92 games. He had a 3-8 war, uh, hit 304, 11 homers, a 350 on base. Uh, the kid is really playing second base, third base, a little corner outfield. And uh, he's the guy that's a little bit of a wild card. Is are, is Tommy Edmond real? And we're going to be walking away from this playoff series saying like, yeah, that that he's a switch hitter. That's one of the guys we should have been talking about as a main threat in this lineup. You and I do lean on experience. I can't buy into playoff Tommy Edmond <laughs> until I see it. I mean, look at look at the A's rookie catcher today. Uh, my guy went to throw out a guy stealing, and he lost the ball. And his one at bat, he went down looking, and that was it. Yeah. Well, the reason Edmund got a lot of run is that Ender – I'm going to say this last name wrong. In, in, in Chiarte? I think it's Inciarte. Inciarte. He got hurt, and then uh, – well, first Edmund came up, and he pushed Carpenter out, I believe. Was it Carpenter? Yeah, Carpenter, Carpenter did not have a Matt Carpenter year, and that's another guy that if he does have a couple – if he has a two – Big playoff games early. It's like, oh, Matt Carpenter's back, huh? Well, he's been doing better since Ender got hurt. That moved Edmund to third and Carpenter back in at second. I think he's been playing well since he moved back. Edmund's been really good. But anyway, my point is the Cardinals lineup does not scream good things to me. And it it really shouldn't. Um, Stats-wise and even threat-wise, like I gave Ozuna a lot of love. His year was solid, but I mean, he's he's a guy that's a threat, and I think that's that's kind of what I was saying. The right-handed bats are the only guys that I think could scare you for the entirety of this series. Yeah, and then for the Braves, it's all about their top four, which for a lot of National League teams, that's always who it's all about: Acuna, Albies, Freeman, Donaldson. Uh, you're gonna have Marcakis. I wonder what they're going to do with the infield. Um, Cause I think, I think our good Dansby Swanson, anyone that's listened to talking baseball knows he's been on slump watch for a while. Yeah. We, we missed it while we hit- were, yeah, he had some hits. Yeah. He had, he had a four hit game and a three hit game back to back. Um, so I, th- I think he's nine for his last 24 or something like that. So I think they rolled Dansby out there. But if he looks bad, I think they go to Eche- Echeverria pretty quickly. Um, I-, I think that's definitely a story in Braves land. But, yeah, I mean, this it, it kind of starts and stops with Albies, Freeman, Acuna, and Donaldson. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I think the Matt Joyce, uh, Adam Duvall conversation is a fun one after checking those guys splits out. Yeah, but they got a lot. They don't have any lefties, right? The Cardinals don't have any lefties. Um, let me get in there. I don't think they have th- a lot of lefties. I think Joyce is going to get a lot of run, and that'll be fun for him. And then McCann's going to be their backstop, right? Is it McCann they're starting? Uh, yeah, the they, they, they've they split pretty evenly between McCann uh, and, and Flowers. Flowers. Um, you assume you know McCann can still swing it pretty good from the right side of that or from the left side, excuse me, and he's got a lot of playoff experience. Um, yeah, and I, I, Matt Joyce, I, I know we're talking about it kind of casually, like him and Duvall, who Duvall does have great splits against lefties, so maybe you'll see a pinch hit at bat or whatever it is. Matt Joyce has had a really good year, uh, 238 plate appearances, a 295 batting average, a 408 on base, an 858 o- OPS. Um you know, Matt Joyce kind of deserves to be playing. And I think, um, again, he's a guy who's been around a lot. You're, you're not, you think he's going to give you professional at bats, uh, the playoffs, that statement could, could change, uh, with, I mean, just a couple at bats, but he's an eight seventy one OPS against right-handed pitching. I, I think you can, uh, if he gets right and he's batting maybe five hole for the Braves, I mean, now you've got, you've just stretched out your lineup one more dude. 
Yeah. Not worried about the Braves lineup. I'm worried about Cardinals lineup. Yeah. Because they got, I'll give you Miotti. I'll give you Goldie. And I think, like, Edmonds been batting two hole. We'll see how they do it in the playoffs. Um, but after that, man, I mean, I mean, Azuna's good. So their, their top four is Fowler, who's been bad in September, Edmund, Goldie, Ozuna, then Yachty. That's their top five. Then after that, it's like DeYoung, Carpenter, Bader, that's Colton it. Colton Wong's Colton Wong's a solid player. He he's hurt. He he's hasn't he, he hasn't had a great year. Is he out for the whole series or they don't know yet? That's that's uh, the last I heard. No, nah, I'm pretty sure he's out. Yeah, la- last I saw they weren't sure if he was going to start game 1. I I don't know. Not sure if he's going to be on the roster or not, but if no, if he is now there, they're saying he's going to start. I looked this up earlier and they were saying like they didn't think he was going to be there. That's that's good for them. Yeah, cuz he he's he's solid. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't had what he could have had this year, but he's he's a good ball player. And that's the only thing that has me worried about this series, Jimbo, is that Acuna and Freddie Freeman are nicked up. Acuna. Um, and um, Colton Wong. I, I just don't want to walk away from this series and be like, yeah, you know, Cardinals one and four. Uh Ronnie and Freddie, they just didn't look right. I just I just don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, I'm just reading this. Dakota Hudson will be available out of the bullpen because they had updates today for the Cardinals because I checked this way early when I was doing this, and I didn't see he was in. But, yeah, Wong ran today, passed the test, and he's going to be in the lineup tomorrow. He's really good defensively. He's one of the best defensive uh, infielders. So lay down some points. I think um, – and we, we won't do the whole thing because we are going day by day, but I believe they're going – uh, the Braves are going Keuchel, Fultonewitz, um, and Soroka, and Freed. I, I think what's going to be an interesting thing that I have circled in this one is that uh, Soroka and Freed, uh, they're going to be on the road. And, you know, again, guys that don't have a ton of experience, they could go out there and shove and look look like the Rays did tonight. Or if they look a little shook, uh, that could be it. Fultonewitz. Yeah, uh, kind of interesting. Like Soroka's young, dude. But we like yeah. we like that as Yankee fans. We like putting Severino as the road guy. Go be the bad guy. Like go. Yeah. So maybe it's the same thing. A little bit, and uh, you know, it goes one of two ways pretty quick. That's that's the beauty of the sport. And the other thing that I've been just flip flopping. You you could ask me every five minutes, and I'll have a different answer. But uh. I mean, Jack Flaherty game two, uh, if I'm a Cardinals fan, I don't want to regret the Brewers coming back in the race so we couldn't line up our starters that Jack Flaherty only gets one start this series. No, he's lined up to get two. If If they go five, that's what I'm saying. If the Braves win this in four, I think you're a Cardinals fan. You're going to be kicking yourself that you didn't have them for one and four. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. So... And that's why the that's why I was on the line. Yeah, and that's why. And the Brewers came back into it. But like you mentioned, some of the Cardinals' numbers this past month haven't been great. The Brewers played incredible. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know. And at the same time, we fell into this trap in Yankee Land. If the if uh, St. Louis can sneak out Game One, and they could beat Keuchel. He, Keuchel's not unbeatable by any measure. I think that Braves house is going to be rocking, chop on. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, but if they, if the Cardinals sneak out game one, Jack Flaherty on the bump game two to bring it back to St. Louis for two games, uh, that, that's why I think game one has more importance than it normally would. But I think anyone could say that about any series. You just did the, the chop on Mm. in the call. And I was thinking when we were at the wedding in Maine and we heard like five bridesmaids, they were taking pictures in the woods, and the photographer said, like, make crazy noise. And they're like, bah, bah, da, 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 da. and we heard them through the woods, and yeah. we were like, holy shit, that sounds crazy since you can't see them. It's just coming from the woods. Imagine a whole tribe of Native Americans doing the, like, oh, chance. Man, war was scary. Just the noises alone would have scared me. War was scary. Next, then they next appear time. through the trees on horseback, fucking kill you like the Dothraki. 
And I I could see Atlanta showing up to game one like that when they call out the players. Damn. That's scary. All right, next. But is, is, there, is, there a, is there a little merit to this statement that this game one is a little more important just because with, with Jack Flaherty, the Braves are either playing with one in the pocket or it's essentially do or die against the best pitcher in baseball the second half of the year? Nah, I don't think Jack Flaherty is a sure thing in the postseason. I got, he's not okay. Verlander. It's just going to be his first time. You know what I mean? Like it. A little bit, yeah. His regular season is fantastic. He could crumble yeah. in the first inning, and we'd be like, well, yeah, playoff baseball is different. I don't think yeah. he's an ace in the pocket at all. I mean, if, you're, okay. if you are a Cardinals fan, be confident. But yeah. if you're a Braves fan, I think you're, you can easily convince yourself, like, if we can get to him, it's playoff baseball. It's a different animal. Right. Walk, Freddie Freeman, two-run shot, boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right, next up, Dodgers versus the Nationals. Nationals fly out to L.A., partying on the plane, Jake, champagne bottles, screaming, beat L.A., beat L.A., beat L.A. We had a a camera crew there. It was fucking, it was a nuts plane ride. It was crazy. Got Walker Bueller versus Patrick Corbin. Really good matchups here. Going to be a fun series. Um, it's, it's hopefully it feels more intense. I was gonna say like West Coast baseball. If it starts in the daytime, it just doesn't. It's lacking in intensity. But Dodger Stadium is pretty. It's got the atmosphere. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Uh, Los Angeles likes getting behind a winner, and they'll they'll be there for this Dodgers team. And man, I I was going through the Dodgers like year by year stuff. I think this is their seventh or eighth straight playoff appearance. And they, you know, the the Dodgers are doing something special, but <laughs> they don't have that title. And I, uh, I've got a little bit of a hot take, Jim. I think this is going to be the most fun series in the playoffs. Um, even if like the Yankees and Houston meet up, even if there's, um, you know, whatever the world series is, because these teams have stacked starting pitching. They've got fun bats in their lineup, and the bullpens are kind of a shit show. And I think this series is just going to be a delight. I like that. I was excited. That's why I was rooting for the Nats, because I thought this series would be really good. Um, We got Bueller going. Walker Bueller, not Kershaw. The torch has been passed. Bueller has it in his hands. Two games versus the Nats this season, one in July, one in May. Uh, one was not great, 5.1 innings pitched, four and runs. That was when he actually matched up with Strasburg, uh, and it was like kind of important games, the end of July, before the trade deadline. And then there was a seven innings pitch, zero earned runs in May. In the bad start, Dozier homered, Robles tripled, and Rendon had an RBI single. Then there's some errors and stuff like that. The numbers against him, there's not a lot there. Gerardo Parra, Gerardo Parra, who is in Baby as Shark. Fuck. He has a, a 316 uh, on base percentage. He's got four hits and 19 plate appearances and a home run. Only gets him a start. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know what that does. But he's got the most. And then after that, the next best is uh, Rendon's three for six. It's 500. And again, uh, I guess we haven't done this disclaimer on talking baseball yet, but batter versus pitcher stats, we know not to put a lot of stock into them because a lot of it's chance and happenstance. I still love looking at them. I cannot stop. Because if there's something crazy always, that pops out, it's cool. You, you've you always been a big BVP guy. That was your fantasy strategy back in the day, and it worked pretty well because it makes sense. You can hit a guy, you can hit a guy. Well, I think uh, it's confidence. like... Juan Soto's 0 for 5. Never gotten a hit off Walker Bueller. I believe in do, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this, uh, uh, maybe I'll go broken record mode a little bit, but it, Jim, I'm, I, I like Patrick Corbin getting the game one start because we saw it in the Red Sox series last year. This Dodgers team is not the same team against lefties. I mean, think about... The the guys that get neutralized more so against lefties, Muncie, Peterson probably won't even start. I think Bellinger is. is is not the same player against left handed pitching. And so, okay, Corey Seager. So you say, all right, but the righties are gonna be better. The righties you're worried about are Justin Turner 
and David Freeze, which, uh, no offense, I'm a big Justin Turner guy. I think he gives a mean at bat. But think about the other guys I just neutralized a little bit. Muncie, Bellinger, Peterson. Those are the guys that are special and dynamic and win you games. And I, I like Corbin uh, coming out in game one against Walker Bueller, who hasn't been who hasn't been the Walker Bueller we saw in the playoffs that broke out last year. He he's had a good year, um, but he kind of he he took a step back and I think he turned it on later in the year and he's better at home. So you figure with that crowd his fastball will have a little more juice. But kind of like what you just said, I mean, a one bad inning from Walker Bueller and it's going to be like, well, should they have gone Kershaw or Ryu? It's like get out of here, Kirkajin. I like the Walker Bueller pick. Yeah. He got Moxie. Vandy guy, Jim. Vandy guy, whatever that means. So, wait. So, Peterson, P- Jock's been starting a lot, but maybe they're just facing a lot of righties lately? Because who's, who's who platoons with Jock? Is it uh, Taylor? I mean, Taylor's around. I know Verdugo got hurt, but he's he's a lefty. Um, Hernandez, Kike can play anywhere. Yeah, but he's not uh, going to start. He's been brutal. Yeah, I, I, I mean they love Kike, um, and yeah, if, if for those of you at home that that don't know, I mean the the Jock Peterson splits are are no joke against right-handed pitching. Jock Peterson is two fifty-two, a three forty-nine on base with a nine twenty OPS. He's essentially an all-star. All of his home runs this year have come off of right-handed pitching against lefties, a 240 on base, a 505 OPS. He goes from uh, an all-star to a double-A hitter, um, righty versus lefty. I think Gavin Lux might get the start. I think he's making the roster. He's been starting at second base a good amount lately. We'll see. That'll be Luxie's been playing big, big prospect, uh, a John Boy Media fan. Will Smith and, and Russell Martin behind the dish. I think it's going to be Smith. We'll see how it goes. But uh, the Dodgers have a lot of history against Corbin. They're in the same division for a long right. time. Um, Corbin's last start, actually, before I get into that, was bad. 4.1 innings pitch, six earned runs to Cleveland. I mean, he's good all season. He's coming off a bad start. So that's interesting. He had one start against the Dodgers this season back in May. It was really good. Seven innings pitch, only three hits, zero in runs. In his career, he has 19 games against the Dodgers to a, starts to three three six ERA. Um, Justin Turner has really good numbers against him. 12 for 32 with three doubles, two homers. That's a one dot one one six OPS. Corey Seager has terrible numbers against him. And Chris Taylor has a lot of at-bats. There, His numbers aren't good. Cody Bellinger is 2 for 11. You know, I'm really interested in Cody Bellinger. If you if you want my honest opinion, I, I'm that's who I'm watching. This We've seen him kind of get neutralized by good pitching. And yeah. I've and seen a couple see a games where they have their way with him, like top-tier pitchers. So we'll see. He says, d- yeah. didn't didn't he have like a, a bad postseason last year, Jake? Uh, I'd have to get into the numbers. I I just know again, it's kind of that. Like if there's a lefty, I mean, Cody Bellinger isn't Ooh. isn't MVP. Cody Bellinger. Oh, his postseason was worse than bad last year. Yeah, Interesting. definitely. It is definitely Bellinger watch. In 16 games, 11 starts, 57 plate appearances, he had a 385 OPS. Yeah. A 193 on base percentage. Holy shit. That's not even bad. That's like brutal. So, yeah. Um, and I, I think he obviously that. last year he was he was a lesser player throughout the season. And I think I did. I do remember reading the articles now like that motivated him to get where he is. So, yeah, I mean, it's Cody Bellinger. It's money time. And his his numbers versus lefties aren't 
Uh, I mean, they're still good. His numbers versus righty are much better, but a 280 bat- batting average, a 386 OBP, and a 982 OPS. I mean, th- those are that's why he's probably the NL MVP. Yeah. You want to make picks or anything to end this show? Um, I I guess I you know we're not a huge pick show. I I think the one fun conversation again is the starting pitching here because they're the Dodgers are going Bueller. They're undecided about Ryu Kershaw, um, and then they'll it, Bueller would be on full rest for Game Four, and it'd be all hands on deck for Game Five. The Nationals have an interesting thing here, Jimmy, because they can go. It's going to be Corbin Game One. We know that. I wonder if they win. If they do throw Anibal Sanchez game two, because here's my thinking. You have Strasburg and Scherzer game three and four at home, and the Nationals don't want to use their bullpen. They don't have a bullpen. <laughs> so I I think if they win game one, there's a conversation to be had there that you throw Anibal out there for game two, or... You throw Strasburg game two because he only threw, I think, 34 pitches in that game. What's and the rest, he would be then? on two days rest? Uh, it would be, yeah, two days rest, 34 pitches. So, I mean, it's probably naturally a throw day, but it's more than he normally would do. I don't know what you do. It's uh, that's the fun conversation because then Strasburg would be lined up for Game Five with again Scherzer basically being able to follow him, um, but you have to get to Game Five for that. But if if he doesn't pitch Game Two, Anibal Sanchez pitches Game Two, right? Then there's an off day. Now we're looking at one, two. We're looking at normal rest. Or- You'd have Strasburg and Scherzer. Scherzer with normal slash extra rest for your two home games, which that sounds pretty nice to me. Yeah, that'd be interesting. And it's not like Annabelle's been bad this year, but I mean, you you just run the risk of going 0-2 and then putting, I mean, again, this, this team in a Scherzer-Strasburg start <laughs> was a Josh Hader normal performance away from not being here. So mm-hmm. I think that's the fun conversation. I don't know if there is a right or wrong answer. We will see. That's an interesting point. We'll see. And then, and then, what's the Dodgers doing? Were you game two or Kershaw game two? So they haven't said it's Ryu or Kershaw, and then the other one will get uh, the third game. Cool. Uh, for these first games, I think I think I'm taking Dodgers and I kind of want to take the Nationals. Taking national well, Braves. I don't care. I think don't, I'm don't I'm, act I'm, like I'm saying this with confidence. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> old takes exposed, man. You're our favorite favorite account. Um, uh, I like. Yeah, I, I might I, like the guy who runs old takes exposed. Sure, but I hate his account, and the people that worship it are the worst. The leeches. Um, yeah, I, no, I think Keikel at home is really fun and. Yeah, I mean, the idea of Patrick Corbin kind of shutting down the Dodgers, I don't know if that's more of a dream, but that I'm a storyline guy, and I kind of like this being the implosion of the Dodgers. Hey, thanks for listening, Dodgers fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. We'll be back tomorrow to recap these two games and preview the two American League Divisional Series matchups and games. Thank you very much. Leave a rating if you want. We'd appreciate it.